Hi everyone, I'm Jia Ho from 2B24. My group name is Yons. Today I'll be talking about Simpsons Rule Section B. Firstly, I'll cover what is Simpsons Rule. Then I'll proceed on to its applications and constraints. Thirdly, I'll compare it with Trapezoidal Rule. Lastly, I'll talk about its advantages and disadvantages. What is Simpsons Rule? It is one of the methods used in finding the approximate value of an area under a curve. We use it for approximating a definite integral like integrating from x0 to x2 for fx dx. Applications of Simpson's Rule Things to note Area under the graph have to be divided into even numbers and calculator should be in radial mode for any calculations that involve trigonometric. Applications of Simpson's Rule For the area under the graph, I would first Label the point as my ordinate y0 as shown here. Then the next point would be y1, y2, and so on. This is the graph is divided into even number of strips. How to use? By looking at the graph shown previously, we use the formula as shown below. By integrating fx dx from a to b, it gives us this formula which is approximately equals to h over 3 multiplying y0 plus y8 plus 4 multiplying y1 plus y3 plus y5 plus y7 close bracket plus 2 multiplied by y2 plus y4 plus y6 plus y8 as you can see y0 will be my first point of my y0 y ordinate and the last point y8 will be my last ordinate. y1, y3, y5 and y7 will be my odd ordinates and my even ordinates will be y2, y4, y6 and y8. When to use? We can use the formula anytime as long as the area under the curve is divided into even number of strips. Any constraints. Instead of just dividing the area under the graph into number of strips we want, we have to divide it into even number of strips with odd number of data points. Comparing with trapezoidal rule, Simpson's rule need to divide the area under the graph into even number of strips, and it uses the sum of areas under parabolas as an approximation for the value of area under the curve. As for trapezoidal, it divides into n number of strips and there is no constraint on the number of strips. The sum of area of the strips gives the approximation for the actual value of area we have. The difference between Simpson and trapezoidal would be that for Simpson's rule we multiply 4 and 2. Unlike in trapezoidal we only multiply by 2. Example 3 of page 26. Evaluate sin x over x dx integrating from 1 to 2 using Simpson's rule with n equals to 4 first let y equals to sin x over x then we proceed on to find interval h where h is equals to b minus a over n and as you can see b is equals to 2 a equals to 1 and n equals to 4 then I proceed on to plot the table with x and y equals to sin x. As you can see, the first and the second points interval is 0 0.25 as well as the others. From the table, you notice that I have odd number of data points. There are 5 altogether. And you can see that I've labeled y0, y1, y2, y3 and y4. These are my ordinates. After that, I proceed on to use Simpson's rule. This is the formula that we need to use in order to find our value of integ integration. Thus, by integrating sin x over x from 1 to 2, we will get approximately 1 quarter over 3 multiplied by y0 plus y4 plus 4 multiplied by 1 plus y3 plus 2 multiplied by y2 then after further calculations you will get your final answer as 0 0.659 recalling the steps earlier 
Step 1, we find interval H is equal to B minus A over N. And step 2, we plot the table. Step 3, we will apply the Simpsons. With the given questions and N equals to 6, we can easily find H which is which is equals to B minus A over N, where B will be my pi over 2 and A will be my 0. Thus, I will get pi over 12. Then I move on to plot the table of theta and square root of sine theta. And you can see that between the first point and the second point, the interval is pi over 12, as well as you can see from the others. After this, we move on to evaluate the value of square root sine theta. By using Simpson's rule, I will find my answer. H over 3, which will give me pi over 12 over 3, multiply by 0 plus 1, which comes from here and here, plus 4 multiplied by 0 0.509 plus 0 0.841 plus 0 0.983 and all these values come from here, here and here. These are my odd ordinates. Then you have to add 2 multiplied by 0 0.707 plus 0 0.931 which comes from here and here. These two values are my even ordinates. Thus, you can see that these are my odd ordinates and these are my even ordinates. Then you calculate and you will find your final answer as 1.19.